traveling back through the woods here on this gravel road and look what is hanging from the tree. That is a Cupie! A Cupie! Oh my goodness, look at this. There's another, another one. A Cupie! Literally, Cupies everywhere. Hey, you all, and good morning. Carpetbagger here coming to you live from Walnut Shade, Missouri. We're just right outside of Branson. And uh, Walnut Shade, Missouri, um, this, this area has a, uh, a very uh, interesting distinction because Walnut Shade, Missouri is the birthplace of the QP. Now, we have a little fun here on this channel, but uh, as I've traveled across the country to, to older museums and things like that, and it appears that QPs have become almost just an omnipresent thing. I, um, I did not know what a QP was when I was younger, but as I've traveled to old historical museums and things like that, there is always Cupies and um, making me wonder like where where did Cupies come from? What what are Cupies? They're you know, portrayed as these like naked baby characters. There is a, a chain of uh, burger restaurants in Ohio uh, that, that use the Cupie. I think it's Cupie Burger. They use the Cupie as a mascot. There's a modern day we have Cupie mayonnaise and um, yeah, in the past, they were, they were Cupies were actually one point a mascot for Jello, and uh, it all comes back here to Walnut Shade, where Rose O'Neill, the creator of the Cupie, she was the actually the first um, published female comic artist. She was an artist. She did comic strips. She um, made characters and she was responsible for the creation of the Cupie. She made, she invented the Cupie and uh, this is actually her uh, a home place. She did not live here full time but they, she had a cabin or a home here in the Branson area where she would use as a retreat and it was on this retreat that she did a lot of writing, a lot of, um, a lot of drawing and it was here that she came up with the idea for the Cupie. So here in Walnut Shade, Missouri, they actually have a Cupie museum. Yes, we have come full circle. We finally made it to the Cupie museum. Please follow me. And this uh, building here is the garden shed. And you can see, <laughs> you can see right there, we have the Cupies. And I don't know, the thing that always just puzzled me was um I just think their nakedness always kind of threw me off um you know you can see there what what you see what cupie is it is like a little elf or fairy like creature you know that it appears as a naked baby but um I think you know the other distinction is that like that pointy top um to their head there I do <laughs> we have the cupie there in uh, in the pith helmet as well. Over here we have another Cupie mural. See the Cupies doing Cupie things, playing fiddles, playing accordions, getting kissed by bluebirds. Oh, look at this, this is even a dog Cupie. See the dog has little wings as well. <laughs> okay, we have the main building here. I guess uh, we head inside here to uh, See all the Cupies. Oh, looks like the Cupie wants us to go in here. So yeah, we start out here with the uh, history of uh, Rose O'Neill 
and the uh, the docent here gives me a pretty good rundown on her life. Pretty fascinating life uh, that uh, that she lived. She apparently um, got her start by uh, having a, a drawing in a contest. She was actually accused of plagiarism because they thought that um, her father had actually done it for her. But uh, once she was able to verify, she was able to redraw it herself. And then she won the prize of uh, a $5 gold piece. So yeah, she became a, um, you know, a professional artist. And uh, yeah, for 1892, for a woman to uh, be a professional, um, you know, cartoonist, artist was, was pretty, pretty amazing. And apparently she had to sign her uh, work as O'Neill because they didn't want to uh, want to you, you know didn't want to publicize you'd publicize the fact that she was female kind of like J.K. Rowling did to uh, to hide the fact that she was uh, female. But uh, 1909 we have the birth of the Cupid and that's what uh, made her a millionaire. Coming up with uh, the Cupies there it says they were. Most popular when they were published in Woman's Home Companion. So this is the first of the series of uh, delightsome Cupie stories. You see the okay. They actually have different names here. That's the plain Cupie, the gardener, the ones careful of his voice, the carpenter, the cook, the Cupie army. I've seen that figure around us like a Civil War soldier. Always wears his overshoes. So even though he's naked, he does have the. Uh, the uh, shoes on. Oh, and that's Wag the Chief. She did other work as well, including doing um, art for women's suffrage suffrage posters. So yeah, she is like a uh, a millionaire, but she still is not allowed to vote. She's a self self made millionaire, but not allowed to cast a vote, which is pretty crazy. Um, she did like other monsters as well, not just the Cupies. She did some like more like fantasy monsters there. Yeah, exhibit monster drawings in Paris. Yeah, wrote some books as well, The Goblin Woman. And then apparently late in her career, um, when she was running out of money, sadly, the uh, she came up with maybe the new Cupie, Ho-Ho, The Little Laughing Buddha, which apparently um, was not as popular as uh, as the Cupid doll, and so yeah, her father had um, built this cabin when she was a when she was a, a younger adult, and um, then she did actually retire here and live here in uh, in retirement. And here we have a Rose O'Neill doll, actually a wax figure of uh, of Rose O'Neill there, and apparently this this chair um, actually belonged to Rose. Yeah, of course, understandably, a big proponent of uh, women's suffrage there. And look at this, she even used the uh, Cupies to promote uh, votes for women. It was a girl and Cupies voting, so the right for women to vote as well as Cupies. So they better babies. I wish my mother had a vote to keep the germs away. See, yeah, interesting how she incorporated the Cupies into the uh, women's suffrage. Yeah, a lot of her artwork in here. And uh, you can see a lot of babies, a lot of children in, uh, in her artwork. She actually never had children of her own, but you can see was fond of drawing children, kind of, you know, leading up to the creation of the Cupie. Yeah, these are proto cupies here there is a plaster life mask so that was uh her first husband apparently she was uh was married twice but was uh divorced twice as well yeah over here we have some of her darker work it wasn't all cute little babies this is man reposing at the feet of his soul this is the troll maiden that troll on uh, on her back. Yeah, she was fascinated with like coming up with her own mythological creatures. It's a fawn playing the pipes there. 
Very completely different drawing style with these. This is the Lost Cherub, so yeah, interesting how uh, how different these are than the QBs. The home here, Bonnie Brook, actually caught on fire at uh, at one point, and these are relics that were retrieved from the fire. And uh, of course, you can see there, these are QBs that were uh, excavated from the wreckage. Now in this room, we have the actual Kewpie Museum. And as we saw earlier, the Kewpie with the flag on his head is the chief Kewpie. Another giant Kewpie doll there. And uh, some looks at some Kewpie plates, Kewpie silverware, Kewpie cups. It's all the different scenes there. Yeah, you could just have a whole set of QP related items. Here are the QPs playing with the QP dog, which I learned today is named QP Doodle Dog. Yeah, you can see he's QP shaped, has little QP wings. I'm getting increasingly smaller there. Now the QP up there with the uh, top hat and monocle. Oh, that one has a, um, like a spoon there. Okay, so I think these are like an ice cream. Okay, yeah, ice cream advertisements. You can see uh, Cupid's there with the, that Neapolitan ice cream. Yeah, that's the uh, logo for Cupid Burger, a uh, fast food chain. They still actually have two locations in Ohio, and some people say that Wendy's actually base their burgers off of Kewpie burgers. I have eaten there, and they are very similar to the uh, Wendy's hamburger, and they have the, the greatest um, slogan, hamburger, pickle on top, makes your heart go flippity-flop. Right here, some more uh, cups here, there's a clock. metal QP there. Look at this, a QP camera. It says QP camera there. You know, it, it, I think it can't be understated that the QPs were just this advertising juggernaut of the time. Oh yeah, look at that. It's a wrapper for QP brand frozen corn on the cob. There is QP toilet paper with QP doodle dog on it. Cupie twin shoes. Uh, yeah, she again. She was a self-made millionaire because of this. I guess she used let the mascot um, go out to all these advertising companies that could use the familiar character to advertise uh, their products. That Cupie looks like he's in a manger. Wow, <laughs> so much. A pennant there. Yeah, you just see so many different things. Like, it's not just, um, like, one brand. It's just all these different things that they would advertise for. The Corona Road Race in uh, 1914. The, uh, I guess, you know, sponsored by Kewpie. I, this is, what, a little Kewpie mold? I don't know if that's to make, um, make chocolates or something like that. You can see uh, the QP lamps there. Yeah, here are the Ho-Hos, the follow-up to the QPs. Didn't take off quite as much, but you can see uh, basically a version of the Buddhist Buddha. Yeah, on the, the figurines here. See the one in the back? I guess that's the gardener with the hat. Oh, you see QPs for all different seasons. There's QP holding a pumpkin, a turkey. All the different QPs for holidays. Yeah, the 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 the, the soldier QPs, they kinda get they they have the the belt with a sword but still still no pants. What's your favorite QP? Leave a comment in the comment section. Some QP wine bottle stoppers there. And um I guess this is like Mount QP here. It's 
Arizona with a QP on it. I guess they're just uh, the mascot for the state of Arizona. Yeah, it's just amazing how many different types of, uh, of doll was made. It's like the Japanese QP section. It looks like ja uh, in Japan, um, the QP kind of took on a whole life of their own. That says QPiesta. The first Japan is that like a QP festival? Is there a QP festival in uh, in Japan? See, the, the Japanese QPs have a slightly, just a slightly different look to them than the uh, the American QPs. The QP witch there. Oh, do QPs hatch out of eggs? I don't, I don't know all their biology. Looks like all these QPs belonged to uh, one person, Becky Perryman, from her mother's collection. So, yeah, this is someone's QP collection, uh, preserved here in the museum. Yeah, here is the QP comics. You can see there, apparently in 2022, Rose O'Neill was actually inducted into the San Diego Comic Con. Hall of Fame, so that's pretty, uh, pretty amazing. Yeah, I guess these would just run in newspapers here. These comics featuring the Cupies. I mean, it just it, it just strikes me that, that at one time in our country's history, we were actually um, it was just like Cupie mania. Look at this. I'll take him to Uncle Hobgoblin. Is that Uncle? Is that Uncle Hobgoblin right there? QP dolls come in these little boxes, like little QP coffins. These are QP cutouts. I guess like little paper dolls where you can uh, cut out the QPs and add uh, some clothes to them. Yeah, they could probably use a few articles of clothing. Cupid uh, plushies. I guess these ones actually are, are, are fairly clothed. They have their whole body covered, including their head. Oh, look at this. This big one here. Yeah. How many times do you think, guys, think I've said the word Cupid in, uh, in this video alone? Here's kind of a different style there. It says... Scoodles on the suitcase. Okay, so this is Scoodles, but here we have Scoodles on QP Beach. So is Scoodle, Scoodles like the name of a particular QP? Scoodles. Here's a movie that featured QPs on Moonlight Bay. Let's see here. I guess the woman received a QP as a present. All these QPs, all sorts of different outfits and designs. Almost like small world QPs. Is that like a QP bride? And a, uh, that one like wearing a hula skirt there. Oh, look at that. It's a QP bobblehead. And over here in the gift shop, we have all sorts of Cupies that are actually for sale. What do these cups say? Cupie College? Cupies in their boxes here. That's baby's first Cupie. Oh, this is just like spare parts. Spare Cupie parts. Look at these here. Wow. That is a fancy cupid. This little guy sniffing a rose. 
can see the t-shirts there. There's best friends with the Cupid Doodle Dog. Okay, I actually, I actually own this plate here. I found this in a uh, antique mall. I um, had no idea. I didn't even know what Cupies were. I was just like, what is happening to Santa there? I just was like, I, I, I need, I just, I, and I just bought it because I just didn't know what it was or what was happening in that picture. I guess that was kind of my informal introduction to, uh, to Cubies. There's all the figurines here. Wonder how many Cupies total they have here at the museum. Yeah, different Christmas ornaments here. It's like vintage cutouts. So this room in here, um, I said used to be a restaurant. Now it is used as an event space and also as a extension of the gift shop. Oh, look at here. In the Cupid Museum we have uh, Raggedy Ann making a making a uh, cameo appearance. Yeah, so non Cupid dolls here. Oh yeah. And uh, Precious Moments doll. Um, and and there, I guess there's like a a, a, a tangential tie-in um, yeah, the, the docent was saying that um, that uh, she had partially that Rosa Neal partially based the Cupid on her deceased brother. Um, so in some ways, it's kind of like a little angel baby. But um, yeah, the precious moments are are also um, they're meant to be children that have passed away. But yeah, it's on. Yeah, it also got Cabbage Patch, got Raggedy Ann, precious moments, and Cabbage Patch all showing up here at the Cupid Museum. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that clown doll right there. That's really cool. So apparently, um, all these dolls that they sell, the Cupies and the other ones, are actually how, um, kind of how they raise money to, to keep the museum operating. They, um, people donate, you know, fans of Cupies, fans of, of dolls donate dolls, and then they, um, We'll turn around and sell them, or to help raise money to keep the museum operating. Look at this little clown here. Oh, do you see that? <laughs> its eyes, its eyes open. Yeah, some very interesting dolls here. They're kind of like a homemade version of Cabbage Patch, and um, probably the most doll that stands out the most is this random John Wayne doll here. And just take a peek at what they have over here. The giant Cupie from Cupieville there. Now, uh, they were telling me this Cupie actually used to sit in downtown Branson. It used to be on the street here, but now resides here at the uh, Cupie Museum. That is pretty amazing. And apparently, I um, I missed time my visit because next week they're having Cupie Esta here in the Branson area, which is actually a international festival dedicated to Cupies. Apparently, this over here that they're setting up is a silent auction for Cupie Esta. Man, I can't believe I came out all the way out here and missed Cupie Esta. All right, and we're gonna have a look here at the Bonnie Brook House. Now, the original Bonnie Brook House burnt down in uh, in the 1940s when there was a fire, and it was actually they they rebuilt a uh, nearly exact replica that opened back up to tourists in the 90s. And uh, we're gonna check inside here in just a moment. See over here, have the uh, the sign in honor of Rose O'Neill, famous artist, sculptress, writer, poet, illustrator, creator of the Cupie, Scoodles, we saw the Scoodles doll inside, and the Ho-Ho dolls. Yeah, she was born in Pennsylvania, but this uh, 
was, I guess, kind of a family home from uh, 1893 until her death in the 40s. And uh, she actually was living here at the time of her death. She actually owned um, homes in New York and I think uh, owned a home on an island somewhere in Europe. But uh, chose to come back here to Missouri in her final days. This was built on the footprint of the original house. And with um, some family members. My dad, as a little boy, ran through this house to visit Rose. My grandfather worked for her. <laughs> we had aunts that were caretakers for her. The kitchen here. The old stove there. A slice of cherry pie. And of course, cupies on the wall. Yeah, so there's some of the cupid uh, mascots for Jello. Here in the living room area, you can see the fireplace. And uh, if you blink, you might miss it. But look there in the fire. You can see the little uh, little cupid fire uh, firewood holder there. the music room in here. They dammed the spring up north of here and piped it in. Oh, how many stories is it? There's three. Oh, yeah. This is Rose's room here. And yeah, you can see some of her artwork on the wall, some of the uh, fantasy monsters that she made. This was her mother's bedroom in here. Above the bed it says, My Cupie Rose. And this is where the magic happened. This is her writing room, her drawing room. Oh yeah, look at that. And uh, apparently this is an actual easel that uh, she used for drawing. Yeah, there's a picture, a picture of her in the room here. And here outside of the house, you have this beautiful garden here, which actually has some of Rose O'Neill's uh, actual sculptures that she sculpted. Here is the Faunus. It's like a, uh, a goat and a woman combination. It's another one of her sculptures here. And here behind the house, next to this uh, babbling brook, we have the family cemetery. See the gate here? This is where Rose O'Neill is buried. You can see her, her mother there and her brother James as well, a little family plot back here. You can see this bench out here by the uh, cemetery. As though we walk through the shadows in the end, our life shines bright. And out here we also have a little fairy garden. This is Lori's garden here. You can see little fairy houses here along the path. Yeah, kind of, kind of fitting. I guess cupies are kind of a, a little fairy type creature themselves. So thank you for joining me today here at the Bonnie Brook Homestead and the Cupie Museum. Um, it's such, it's such, uh, shows so much passion that the local community has. Um, this woman, Rose O'Neill, the first published female cartoonist um you know the house burned down the house was almost entirely gone when it uh, burned down in the 40s but the community 
um, the organization here they they rallied enough to rebuild the entire house um, I think that just shows you know what a big impact Rose O'Neill had on the area and how proud they were of her and uh, and what she did and uh, just a wonderful you can just feel the passion the people volunteering here the people working here and my only regret is that I did not come a week later because like I said they are having a international QP festival QPesta they call it is uh, is next week so sadly somehow I missed that and um and I, I definitely should have come during uh, QP Esta. Maybe some year we'll make it out to QP Esta. I um I made some purchases. I figured I visit the QP Museum. I should uh, purchase myself a QP. They're only five dollars for that uh, little QP. Um, I got one, a fully clothed one, but uh, I. Uh, I don't know, they, 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 they're selling these dolls. This is how they, they make money, how they stay in business. These dolls are donated, and then uh, then they resell them to help raise money to keep their museum, their organization running. And so I thought it would be appropriate to have a QP souvenir, have a QP from the QP Museum in my collection. But that's not all. I just, I couldn't say no. I couldn't say no to the sleepy clown. Uh, let me see if we can do it. Closes, closes their eyes and then opens them up. Closes, close. Let's see. Closes their eyes and opens them up. <laughs> this was only five dollars as well. I just I couldn't pass on that. I needed this. I needed this uh, for the bunker as well. So those were five dollars each. And then they even threw in a free Cupid puzzle. So, uh, I got a new appreciation, a new appreciation for Cupies, new appreciation for Rose O'Neill, and uh, from now on, on this channel, we've had some fun, but from now on, the Carpetbagger channel officially endorses, loves, and appreciates the artistry, the legacy behind the Cupie, and everything it stands for. So, we have come full circle. And I now embrace the QP and its history and its contribution to American and roadside culture. So uh, thank you so much. It's been quite a journey today. Uh, if, uh, if you'd like these videos, please subscribe. I travel around the country. I film roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun stuff. Um, if you'd like to... If you like... Uh, you know, if you like what you see here, please subscribe. Hit that uh, subscribe button. It uh, helps me out. It'll help you know uh, know when new videos come up. If you'd like to help in other ways, consider consider contributing to Patreon. Three dollars or more gets your postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop and um, doing personalized messages on Cameo. If uh, all those things are in the description, and all those things help keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.